Hello, good morning, students. So this is the third topic uh, in our conjunctivitis. Already we have seen bacterial conjunctivitis, virulent conjunctivitis of adult, ophthalmoneumonatum, allergic conjunctivitis, and after allergic conjunctivitis we have seen something about vernal catarrh. At that time I told vernal catarrh is a condition. It is because of a exogenous allergen so today we are going to learn something about a condition that is called as a flactinular conjunctivitis some call it as a flactinular keratoconjunctivitis and it is because of a endogenous allergen so all these conditions they can be asked in your theory examination for a short note so endogenous or immune system mediated conjunctivitis allergic conjunctivitis that is called as a flactinular conjunctivitis so the conjunctivitis it occurs primarily because of an activation of the immune system various allergic conjunctivitis drug reactions and autoimmune diseases affect the mucous membrane conjunctivitis membrane so what is the definition so keratoconjunctivitis is produced as an allergy to an endogenous agent that is called as a flactinular conjunctivitis so flactin means blame is an endogenous allergic conjunctivitis it is marked by photopopia mucopurulent discharge sometimes the discharge is absent the presence of a single or multiple gray white raised nodules at the limbus surrounded by an area of conjunctival congestion so the congestion is around the nodule the nodule is devoid of congestion the congestion is around the nodule so many times we are asking a short note on differential diagnosis of nodule at the limbus so this will be your question you have to solve the question nodule at the limbus differential diagnosis of nodule at the limbus so what is the etiology of flactinular conjunctivitis it is a manifestation of allergy to an endogenous toxin the endogenous toxin can be tubercular protein intestinal parasites septic foci as is seen in tonsils and adenoids so it is a delayed hypersensitivity reaction Mediated response of conjunctival and corneal epithelium to previously sensitized endogenous allergen. In allergic conjunctivitis, we have seen the first there is a sensitization and there is a reintroduction of the allergen and there is a heightened response. So there can be a tubercular or staphylococcus protein that has been came in a contact with the conjunctiva of the person. So there is a sensitization. and again there is a reintroduction that is a delayed hypersensitivity reaction that is a type 4 cell mediated reaction that is causing the conjunctivitis there is another condition you can call it as a flactinolysis that is a secondary to staphylococcal blepharitis means when there is a, a inflammation of the lead because of staphylococci there is a affection of conjunctiva that is called as a flactin nulosis so the disease is common in malnourished and debilitated children between 5 to 12 years of age in some books it is given as 4 to 14 years of age but you can mention both no problem so the children having enlarged tonsils and there is a cervical lymphadenopathy the malnourished debilitated children having enlarged tonsils and cervical lymphadenopathy the flactinular conjunctivitis is usually unilateral there is a mild discomfort there is a irritation with reflex lacrimation in this picture you can see there is a temporal conjunctival congestion in this picture you can see it is a bluish but in books it is written as a pinkish white congestion pinkish white congestion at uh, in this picture it is at a temporal area so what are the conditions that affect the 
temporal bulbar conjunctiva at the limbus that should be in your differential diagnosis so what are the signs a single or multiple small round white or gray nodules raised above the surface are found at or near the limbus so in this picture you can see a vessel that is supplying to the nodule so nodule is seen as a white it is at the limbal area and the congestion is around the nodule in this picture it is depicted nicely there is a conjunctival congestion you know the conjunctival congestion it is a bright red it is at the away from the limbus so in this picture again you can see a nodule surrounded by the conjunctival vessels the size may vary from 0.5 mm to 4 mm the bigger flecten appear as a fissure so there are some stages you can have a nodule you can have a vesicle you can have a fissure means if there is a pus formation generally it is called as a fissure the congestion is seen all around the nodule that is called as a flecten then there are some types simple flectenal conjunctivitis then flectenal keratoconjunctivitis conjunctivitis when there is affection of cornea you call it as a kerato kerato means cornea when there is a simultaneous affection of cornea as well as conjunctiva it is called as a kerato conjunctivitis and there is another uh, clinical type that is called as a flectenal keratitis when cornea alone is involved that is rare but when there is a inflammation of cornea because of the flecten that is present in two forms the pathological stages just i have told there is a vesicular or nodular formation stage at the limbus then there can be an ulceration stage then healing by granulation that is called as a stage of granulation and there is a stage of healing or scar formation so simple flectenal conjunctivitis that is the most common pinkish white nodule near limbus surrounded by hyperemia on bulbar conjunctiva and flectenal keratitis just i told keratitis can be affected by two types one is ulcerative flectenal keratitis and another one is diffuse infiltrative keratitis the cornea is infiltrated or may be invaded by a corneal flecten causes pain and photophobia so what is the reason of pain and photophobia when there is a involvement of cornea there is a pain and photophobia photophobia means undue awareness of light so you can very well consider when there is a involvement of cornea the patient will have a photophobia when there is only involvement of conjunctiva the patient will not have photophobia but there can be pain so flectenal keratitis ulcerative flectenal keratitis you can have a sacrophilus ulcer it is a shallow marginal ulcer formed due to breakdown of small limbal flecten so when there are multiple limbal flecten and there is a breakdown and if they are shallow and they are marginal they are around the margin of cornea around the limbus fascicular ulcer is another terminology is used it has a prominent parallel leash of blood vessel this ulcer usually remains superficial but leaves behind superficial opacity after healing so the fascicular ulcer is having a supplying blood vessel to the ulcer then there is a miliary ulcer multiple small ulcers are scattered over a portion of or whole of the cornea around the limbus so there is a coalescence of the small shallow ulcers so if there are multiple limbal nodules because of flectenal conjunctivitis they may the scattered ulcer or scattered nodules may coalesce together and they form a miliary ulcer multiple small ulcers they can coalesce to form a ring around the limbus so diffuse infiltrative flectenal conjunctivitis it may appear in the form of central infiltration of cornea 
with characteristic rich vasculation from the periphery all around the limb bulb. So, ulcerative and diffuse, these are the two types of flaccular keratitis. This is a differential diagnosis of nodule and the limbus. You have to write a short note on this. So, it can be because of inflammation, that is episcleritis and scleritis. It can be because of an allergy, that is a flactin or spring catar. It is because of degeneration, that is seen in pingicula. Because of cyst, that can be dermoid cyst, retention or implantation cyst or parasitic cyst. In tumors, it is because of squamous cell carcinoma, papilloma, nevus, malignant melanoma, granuloma, it can be because of tuberculosis or syphilis and filtering blame. Generally, it is seen at the 12 o'clock position, but you can take it as a differential diagnosis of nodule at the limbus. So, treatment, the general treatment is improvement of the general health and treatment of the cause. So, infected tonsils and adenoids has to be treated, desensitization of the patient against tubercular or staphylococcal allergen, a calorie rich diet with vitamins A, C and D along with calcium has to be given and concurrent treatment of systemic infections in the patient. Generally, we are talking about a malnourished or debilitated child having this flattened. So, concurrent treatment of systemic infections that is an important that is for a general improvement of health and in local you can have hot compresses then saline irrigation if the patient is having a purulent or you can say mucopurulent discharge generally the discharge is not there but if it is then you can have a warm water saline irrigation then installation of corticosteroid eye drops and ointments then to prevent the secondary infection to occur, you have to go antibiotic eye drops that generally we are preferring moxifloxacin eye drops. And if there is a corneal ulcer, if there is an involvement of cornea, you can give a cycloplasic. But atropine eye ointment can be given as patient may not come for the follow. -up. So it is better to have a cycloplasia of longer duration. So atropine has a potent cycloplegic and mitriatic also. Then dark or tinted glasses to avoid the photophobia. So this is a general and as a local treatment for the flatulinar conjunctivitis. Here with we finish his allergic conjunctivitis. So allergic conjunctivitis short note can be asked on a vernal catar, spring catar or flaccular conjunctivitis. So we will start uh, another small topic uh, for today's discussion that is a viral conjunctivitis. So conjunctiva has been affected because of a bacteria, virus and because of an allergy. So there can be an infective variety of conjunctivitis and allergic variety. Another uh, part that is fungus can affect the conjunctiva and there are some granulomatous conjunctivitis then toxic conjunctivitis because of chemicals so bacterial conjunctivitis viral conjunctivitis allergic conjunctivitis so the patient may come to our opd with a complaint of a discharge that is serous discharge mucopurulent discharge there can be preauricular lymph nodes palpable and then the reactions of conjunctiva that is hyperemia, chemosis, papillae, follicles and all these will contribute for a diagnosis. So, uh, dealing with viral conjunctivitis, viral infections cause serous or clear watery discharge. It is characterized by conjunctival inflammatory reaction. Just I have told the conjunctival inflammatory reaction, it can have a papillae, it can have a follicle, it can have a membrane. In membrane, you can have a true membrane, pseudo membrane. Then there is a chemosis of conjunctiva and type of a conjunctival reaction. So you have to follow accordingly, according to the type of conjunctival inflammatory reaction. So follicular conjunctivitis. So when there is a prominent reaction of a conjunctiva in the formation of follicles, it is called as a follicular conjunctivitis. That is.
commonly caused by viruses that can be herpes simplex virus or adenoviruses isolated follicles may occur in lower conjunctiva in long standing conjunctivitis because of uh, etiology can be different but it is a long standing conjunctivitis so less than 4 weeks conjunctivitis is called as a acute conjunctivitis and if it is a more than 4 weeks duration it is called as a chronic conjunctivitis so long standing conjunctivitis can cause isolated follicles in the lower palpebral conjunctiva so conjunctiva associated with development of follicles that is a sago grain like structure the follicular conjunctivitis can be seen because of exposure to chemicals or toxins it can be seen because of a drug also that is a pilocarpine so acute follicular conjunctivitis it can be seen in chlamydial influenza conjunctivitis epidemic keratoconjunctivitis, conjunctivitis pharyngeal conjunctival fever newcastle conjunctivitis primary hereditary conjunctivitis and recurrent herpes simplex conjunctivitis another variety is hemorrhagic conjunctivitis all they can occur as a acute follicular conjunctivitis chronic follicular conjunctivitis just i have mentioned a long standing conjunctivitis it is because of drug induced that is a pilocarpine drug or secondary to local lead lesions that is molluscum contagiosum pediculosis or due to trachoma so these are all chronic follicular conjunctivitis so we will just see a few to know something that is acute follicular conjunctivitis that is marked watering minimal hyperemia boggy swelling of conjunctiva that is called as a chemosis usually this conjunctivitis is associated with mild viral upper respiratory tract infection the common viral infections are because of adenovirus, picornavirus, herpes simplex, orthomyxovirus. We are seeing about some thing epidemic keratoconjunctivitis. So now in the era of coronavirus, you know everything that is a epidemic, endemic, and a pan-endemic. So viral diseases can cause endemic, epidemic, and pandemic. So in epidemic keratoconjunctivitis, the young adults they are involved. Adenovirus serotypes 8 and 19 because they can 19 can last uh, days on surfaces. So the infection chances are more. No systemic manifestations are seen. Generally, epidemic keratoconjunctivitis starts as unilateral, but other eye can get infected within a week or less. It is a contagious. So there are widespread epidemics can occur. It can be seen in clinics because of the contaminated solution, the fingers or use of a tonometer. So it can be transferred from one patient to another that is seen in hospital. So in just like a hospital acquired infections, this can be transmitted from the hospital staff. So in this picture, you can see the inferior follicles. You can see subconjunctival petechiae hemorrhages, or there can be superficial epithelial uh, infiltrations. In the third picture, you can see there can be a pseudomembrane. In the first picture, there is a pseudomembrane, and there are tender lymph nodes. So all these will tell you that the patient has been suffering from a viral conjunctivitis and in this patient the corneal affection is also present the corneal complications appear as a punctate epithelial infiltrates that is called as superficial punctate keratitis there can be discrete sub epithelial opacities and as the cornea is involved the patient will have a photophobia the healing stage after the healing of this corneal so, subethyl opacities, corneal opacities may persist for months and in some patient they can remain for years together. Investigations, you can have an uh, immunofluorescent test for detection of the presence of adenoviral group antigen. 
the treatment is non specific when there is a foreign body sensations or irritation you can have a cold compresses and an ample amount or plenty full amount you can give a lubricating eye drops then there is another variety that is a primary herpes simplex conjunctivitis that is in children that is because of a contagion it can be comparable with more common acute stomatitis marathi tala jar ala asa mantat angle of mouth cha thikani tumhala baryaj vedala ulceration ulcer disto that is because of a herpes simplex so that is the starting point and the patient may get a conjunctivitis that is because of a primary herpes simplex 60% of population infected by age of 5 and 90% by 16 it can be unilateral but there is no scar like zoster you are seeing uh, in a zoster ophthalmicus there is no scar the patient may have a foreign body sensations complain of foreign body sensations so in this picture you can see there is affection of lid as well as conjunctiva so there is a follicular response there is vesicle formation and the lymph nodes are tender so this is a herpes simplex conjunctivitis then you can have an acute hemorrhagic conjunctivitis that is hemorrhagic conjunctivitis due to corona viruses that is coxsackie and enterovirus 70 the petechial hemorrhages it is written as in book that is a from pin point to large hemorrhages that can be seen in acute hemorrhagic conjunctivitis this is called as a apollo conjunctivitis the another name is apollo conjunctivitis and at that time there was a pan endemic enlarged lymph nodes enlarged lymph nodes are seen in this patient the incubation period for acute hemorrhagic conjunctivitis is 24 to 48 hours spread is direct contact hands and fomites so the complaints of the patient can be watering redness photophobia conjunctival congestion and subcutaneous hemorrhage just uh, from pin point to a large hemorrhages radiculomyelitis is noticed in some cases that is a neurological complication you can say in this conjunctivitis apollo conjunctivitis in pharyngo conjunctival fever so epidemic keratoconjunctivitis conjunctivitis hemorrhagic or apollo conjunctivitis and then pharyngo conjunctival fever so you can have a short note on epidemic keratoconjunctivitis conjunctivitis so it is caused by adenovirus pharyngo conjunctival pcf it is caused by adenovirus serotypes 3 4 and 7 acute conjunctivitis pharyngitis fever and pre auricular lymph nodes you are seeing in this patient in this picture you can see the conjunctiva is chemol there is a lead edema the patient having a fever sore throat tender lymph nodes then there are follicles and possible sub epithelial infiltrates in the cornea so acute and chronic follicular conjunctivitis epidemic keratoconjunctivitis conjunctivitis can be seen by 3 7 8 and 19 types of adenovirus then pharyngo conjunctival fever associated with pharyngitis and fever there is another variety that is called as newcastle conjunctivitis because of the infected fowls and acute herpetic that is a primary or a recurrent usually in primary herpetic infection you have seen vesicular lesion on face and there is a preauricular lymph nodes palpable so these are some of the viral uh, uh, diseases you can say in rubella or in measles also you can have conjunctivitis but generally that conjunctivitis secondary to exanthematous fever in our acute mucoperl and conjunctivitis we have seen but to just mention the patient can have in this viral disease uh, viral conjunctivitis also unilateral follicular conjunctivitis granulomas with follicles node enlargement and chemosis lead swelling and in measles you can see the patient is having fever cough coryza also the conjunctivitis there but generally that can be a bacterial secondary infection 
conjunctivitis but you can see the poplic spot in the buccal mucosa so here with we are finishing the viral conjunctivitis so you can have a short note on viral conjunctivitis and you can have a question to solve that is a nodule at the limbus the next topic will be if there is something remaining in the conjunctivitis and vitamin a deficiency then trachoma and then pterygium and then that will finish our conjunctiva so maximum topics on uh, of conjunctiva they are for short notes thank you